Good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to send this video message for the 25th anniversary of the Asian Development Bank Institute. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my heartfelt congratulations to Dean Somobe, President Asakawa of the Asian Development Bank, and all the ADBI staff on this happy occasion. The ADBI was inaugurated as a subsidiary of the ADB in December 1997 in the midst of the Asian financial crisis to conduct research and provide capacity building and training to support the ADB's program in Asia and the Pacific. The crisis severely affected East and Southeast Asian countries and led to deep recession. However, countries in the region learned from the crisis. They worked both individually and collectively to strengthen economic fundamentals and financial market structures, and most of the region recovered relatively strongly. Meanwhile, the rest of Asia has shown strong growth in the last 20 years five years with the progress made in trade liberalization and foreign investment. Now, 25 years after the crisis, Asian economies are the largest contributor to global growth. However, important challenges remain, in particular, our response to climate change. With the world's most populous and fastest growing economies, Asia emits the largest volume of greenhouse gases, producing about half the world's carbon dioxide. Asia is also the region most prone to natural disasters. With extensive coastlines, low-lying territories, and many small island states, its geography makes it highly susceptible to rising sea levels and weather extremes, including typhoons, tropical cyclones, wildfires, floods, and drought. Rising sea levels alone could directly affect millions of people, potentially submerging many cities. To complicate matters, many economies in Asia are having to cope with the effects of climate change, while at the same time trying to raise living standards and deal with significant infrastructure needs. These vast challenges make the financing of adaptation measures particularly important. The ADB estimates that the region must invest 1.7 trillion US dollars a year in infrastructure through 2030 to maintain growth momentum, eradicate poverty, and respond to climate change. From a different viewpoint, Asia may be well positioned to address these challenges and benefit from the opportunities that come from managing climate risk effectively. Infrastructure and urban areas are still developing in many parts of Asia. This gives the region a chance to ensure that new infrastructure is more resilient and better able to withstand heightened risk. At the same time, key economies in the region are advanced in the technologies that are necessary to adapt to and mitigate climate change ranging from electric vehicles to renewable energy. By maximizing these opportunities and sharing best practices with the rest of the world, Asia can become a leader in one of the most significant challenges facing the world. I believe the ADBI is ideally positioned to support the region's economies in their efforts to adapt to and mitigate the challenges of climate change. The Institute has been addressing climate change issues since as early as 
2010. It has completed a number of projects assessing policy initiatives, identifying gaps, and examining new opportunities for greener growth. I expect more research will be conducted in this field to strengthen the region's voice in the international arena. The objective of the EDDI is to look ahead to the next 10 to 20 years and focus on the region's medium to long-term development issues of strategic importance. This means that the scope of research does not have to be limited to climate change. With its flexible and nimble approach under the leadership of successive deans, including Dr. Naoyuki Yoshino and Dean Sonobe, the ADBI has always been able to focus its expertise on timely themes such as infrastructure for regional cooperation. The Institute also excels in integrating research, capacity building, and training and outreach. Scaling up capacity development is crucial to ensuring that government officials have the skills necessary to handle complex issues. While I served as president of the ADB from 2005 to 2013, I interacted with two ADBI deans, Dr. Peter McCauley and Dr. Masahiro Kawai. Dr. McCauley directed the institution with great success, thanks to his experience as Deputy Director General of OSAID and as an Executive Director of the ADB. He also promoted use of the internet to share information more widely with the public. Dr. Kawai, who took office as dean in 2007 after serving as a special advisor to the ADB president in charge of regional economic cooperation and integration, helped improve significantly the quality of research as well as capacity building and training and put the ADBI on the list of leading global think tanks. The ADBI is now recognized as a leading regional and global think tank. The institute was ranked as the world's top government-affiliated think tank for the second consecutive year in the 2020 Global Go-To Think Tank Index report published by the University of Pennsylvania. In this age of worldwide uncertainties, there are both challenges and opportunities for the Asian region. There are also high expectations for the region to make a key contribution to the global agenda. To that end, the ADBI has a crucial role to play in providing intellectual leadership and promoting knowledge sharing in the region. I'm confident that the ADBI will take up that role and provide essential support for the region's challenges. In closing, I would like to once again to extend my sincere congratulations on the 25th anniversary of the ADBI and to thank all those who have made this possible. I look forward to the 30th or 40th or 50th and many more anniversaries to come. Thank you.